90 Nocturne Boulevard presents 1995. More delays for the space shuttle. Little bit, you must equip. What's up with this virtual Game Boy? And comment to rumors of Royal Devour. Does that mean you pay for it and just pretend? And now back to the Prisoner of Hancock House. Season 1, Episode 8. He's talking. Good. We need to know if the site can be cleared. He left long before shit went down. So, even if he doesn't know what happened, he can find out, right? He won't agree to a sitting. Convince him. Good luck with that. Convince him. I sent someone along to help. Who? An old friend. And you didn't warn me why? Last minute decision. You were already with the target. Why? Why is this whole thing so important? I mean, sure, Agent Judge wants closure, but in the grand scheme of things, why are we putting so much effort into this? It's one damn house. Long gone. There are always ramifications above your pay grade, Agent Cook. Schedule a sitting. Immediately, if not sooner. There are many theories bandied about regarding the existence of life after death, and more specifically about the existence and functionality of lingering entities, which for simplicity we will refer to by their common nomenclature as ghosts. Quick poll, how many saw Ghostbusters? <laughs> Looks like most of you. Great. Now forget about all that. Spirits seldom have the we'll call it energy for now, the energy to maintain much of a facade, let alone be a class three free roaming thing. <laughs> Most hauntings that can be verified are much tamer. Small objects moving, bad smells, occasional glimpses of a face in a mirror or through a window. Often ghosts are associated with induced entropy, things that age before their time, like wilted flowers or crumbling, decayed paper. The debate as to whether the personality of the dead truly remains, or just residual energy after death, usually a violent death, is an ongoing one. Despite people claiming to have messages that specifically purport to come from dead loved ones, there is an element of wish fulfillment about most of them. And the interpretation of any such message must be looked at very closely. Yes? You? What are you doing here? What do you mean? Did they come armed? Uh, no. But they knew where to find me. I'm pleased to find you're all right. Not really. Well? How much do you know? About the Hancock House debacle? As much as anyone. Anyone in the organization, I suppose. Can you tell me what happened then? What do you mean? I left. Late the night we arrived after the seance. They said the house burned down? Sometime around dusk the next day. Long after I was gone. But you are the only person left to ask about what happened. Yeah, about that. Hmm? Wish I could be sure I could trust you. You know me. I knew you. And you never trusted me enough to let me in. I don't mean you, you. I mean you, all of you. The whole damn organization. I keep getting flashes of things that don't fit with what's going on. And I feel like everyone is lying to me. Have I lied? Tonight? Yes. Oh? When? Everyone keeps sneakily using words like only one left to talk or only one who walked out of there, but specifically not only survivor or only one left alive. Ah. Who else? Who else is there and why aren't they talking? Pizza. We'll pick it up again in 15 minutes. Would you like the professor to sit in? I still want to know. Picking up the interview where we left off, Agents Cook and Zachary present, addition of Professor Howell. Acknowledge, Howell? Present. And me. Of course you're here, Mr. Stockman. Otherwise, what would be the point? Of course. Mark here had a question that I believe he deserves an answer to. <sighs> they already know you are asking. Listening devices are abundant here. Of course. 
I'll answer, but only if you, Mr. Stockman, will seriously consider a request that comes from higher up the food chain. Which is? Don't you want the answer first? I'm starting to suspect it's not worth it. Cards on the table. They want you to contact the dead agents. No. No way. Do you even understand what you're asking? At least, if the agents answer your question, you'll know who you won't be talking to. Nineteen Nocturne Boulevards, The Prisoner of Hancock House, features Michael Coleman as Mark Stockman, Kimberly Poole as Agent Cook, Mark Olson as Agent Zachary, Rick Lewis as Professor Howell, and Robert Cudmore was the mysterious voice on the phone. The Prisoner of Hancock House was written by Julie Hoverson. Sound editing was done by Julie Hoverson. The show's theme music was composed by Dane Russell Leonardson. Voices in the opening credits include Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard, Sarah Golding, Terry Cooper, and Julie Hoverson. The 19 Nocturne Boulevard theme, Netherworld Shanty, was composed by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Sound effects were licensed from SoundSnap, Pro Sound Effects, and Free Sound Effects, or used under a Creative Commons license. All persons, places, and things in this episode are fictitious or used in a fictitious manner, and any resemblance to people living dead or undead is purely coincidental. Many thanks to our Patreon supporters. For a full list of cast members, and to find out how to help support the show, please email us at 19nocturne at live.com or check out our Facebook page. We love to hear from people. <laughs> <laughs>